Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Aquariums of, Aquarium of the Pacific's Online Academy. My name is Alicia. We're going to raise my camera just a little bit there. We had Dave just teaching our last program, and I'm a little shorter than Dave. All right, so thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We're going to be talking all about sea turtles today. Are you excited? I am super excited. This is our first sea turtles class. If you have questions, you would like to make observations, you would like to join us in the conversation as we explore these really amazing animals, you can text us at 562-286-1838. And we're going to be um, taking a closer look at these marine reptiles. So feel free to text us in. If you are joining us after our broadcast, you're welcome to email us if you have any questions, observations. Maybe you're doing a sketch, you're drawing out any of your observations today. We'd love to see that. You can email us later at live, L-I-V-E, at L-B-A-O-P dot org. Okay, so if you've been making some observations already, you may have noticed that we have a sea turtle in our habitat behind me. This is our shark lagoon habitat. Now I'm not alone in my studio putting up all of the wonderful images that we're gonna be looking at today. We have Stacy, she's behind the, the camera today at our computers, um, helping us with all of our media. And we also have Dave, who's taking your, your text questions. Now, if you are going to text in, um, we just asked uh, for our younger audiences if you get permission because normal texting rates do apply. All right, did you find the sea turtle? Yeah, so here at the aquarium, you have one kind of sea turtle. This is called an olive ridley sea turtle. And the sea turtle on this side, this is our sea turtle. Taking a nap, where you generally will find our sea turtle in the camera. There's a nice little uh, cave there for our sea turtle. And it's very happy living in here in our shark lagoon habitat. It's so comfortable that it's taking its little afternoon siesta. Okay, so let's start. What makes a turtle a turtle? Now, when we're thinking about sea turtles, you're probably also thinking about their cousins that live on land. What is the name for their cousins that live on land? These are also a type of reptile. Hmm. Are you thinking of a tortoise? Yeah. So tortoises live on land and they're shaped a bit different than their sea turtle relatives. Maybe we can take a look at an example of a sea turtle up close, a picture of any type of sea turtle, and we'll just take a look. There we go. So we have a, a hawksbill sea turtle here, and we're taking a look. What do you notice about this sea turtle? Hmm. What are some things that maybe are the same as a tortoise, its cousin that lives on land, or something that you notice that's really interesting? And again, you can text in your observations. You can write them down. If you don't have a chance to text in, you can always tell a family member or uh, tell your pets. That's what I like to do sometimes when I'm home. I talk to my cat. All right. What do you notice? Is there anything special that this animal has to live in its marine home? Hmm. How is it different? Well, you probably have noticed already that it has to swim around these flippers. It also has a nice shell around its body. So a uh, tortoise, their land relatives, also have a shell. And this shell, what do you think it does for them? Yeah, it offers protection. Now, tortoises on land, like let's say a desert tortoise on land, has a shell that's a little bit more domed. And I have some examples of some tortoise and turtle shells with me. And they have been given to us under special permission. So uh, sea turtles are protected here in the United States and many tortoises are too. Uh, so these are given to us by our states. We have special permits to have them and they're used for education. So I'm gonna bend down so I can show you. So now a, a turtle and a tortoise cannot just leave their shells. They have to stay part of their shells their whole life. So we're looking at parts of an animal that's no longer alive. So this is a desert tortoise shell and uh, desert tortoises have kind of that rounded shell to them and they can actually move inside for very short periods of time. They can tuck their heads into their shell if they need to. 
um, a green sea turtle. Now, green sea turtles can get really big. Green sea turtles can get almost 400 pounds. A lot of them, when they're full grown, can be around 200 to 300 pounds, but 400 pounds is really big. And they have a really nice uh, sleek shell that allows them to swim around, but they cannot pull their heads into their shells because they're holding their breath. They breathe air just like we do. And so in order to live in their ocean habitat, they have to breathe through their nostrils right here. These are called nares and they hold their breath in order to go underwater. But they need space to hold that air. And so to, in order to create a little bit more space in their bodies, they're not gonna tuck their heads in. But they still can use that nice hard shell in order to defend themselves. So another way that they can, so they can hold their breath, they have a shell, uh, but they're a little bit different in that they don't have legs to walk, in, walk, walk with. They have these um, flippers instead that stick out. And wait, what do you notice about these flippers? What do they have on them? Well, if you look closely, they have scales. And their scales are made, just like other reptiles, of the same material as your hair and your, na your nails. This is called keratin. And there are special kinds of keratin that build up the scales and also the shell. Now the shell is something that grows with the sea turtle. In fact, it is part of the sea turtle's spine. So a sea turtle is a type of vertebrate animal, just like us, they have a, a skeleton. So if you feel your back, we have the bones of our back. And for a sea turtle and a tortoise, their land relatives, their shell grows from their skeleton. So it's actually attached to them. So as they grow, it extends from there, which is pretty cool. So if I show you the underneath, you can actually see the ribs and the skeleton kind of built into this shell. So this is the underneath part of one of these shells, which is, I think, kind of awesome. Uh, but that shows you as well that it can't slip out in some of the cartoons that maybe you saw as a kid that I did too, that they kind of hide from their shells or they can slip out. Well, they, they actually can't do that. So here they have these plates. So if you look closely at these plates, this is for the hawksbill that you're seeing above. Now I know that it's this type of sea turtle because the way that these individual plates, they're called scoots. Isn't that a fun word? I love that word. These scoots have a pattern. And depending on the type of sea turtle, there's gonna be a different pattern. The pattern for this animal, um, if you count, they usually count the outside scoots. They have a certain number for the type of sea turtle. And also, if we look closely, you'll see that their scoots overlap. They're kind of like shingles of a roof. So they, they kind of overlap and they're very pointed along the sides here. So that makes them a little bit different than some of the other kinds of sea turtles. So this is one way that scientists can identify them. Now there are seven different types of sea turtles out there and they all have different patterns. Um, some of them can be very similar, but they have different features to their bodies. Not only are they watching or counting the numbers of scoots on their shells, but they're also looking at how many scales they have on their head. So they can maybe photograph or watch or record and it'll show us how many will be on the head and that's how a scientist or maybe even if you visit some of these places and see a sea turtle you can go oh wow that is a, a hawksbill or a you know a loggerhead sea turtle or um, a green sea turtle that we're going to be doing a lot of um, chatting about. So they have these really amazing patterns to their bodies. In fact, I have a special camera and I have a little model of a green sea turtle. We can just kind of take a look. Ta-da! So this is not real. This is just a model, my little plastic model here. But I think it's kind of fun for us to take a look. So we'll see for a green sea turtle, they have these, um, these one, two, three, four side scoots. So next time you see a picture, you can also identify. They also look at, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Doo -doo. 
how many, again, scales. There's just these two scales, one, two, that are just in front of the eyes. And it's a little bit different depending on what type of um, turtle that you're looking at. So this is the green sea turtle. Again, there are seven different kinds, and I'll kind of run through. I'm going to turn my light on just a little bit so you can see the, the sea turtles a little bit better. So we have the green sea turtle, and again, they can get um, a little bit bigger, in fact. So their shells, thank you, Miss Stacy. Um, you can see a, a green sea turtle. This is actually a sea turtle that is found throughout the Pacific Ocean. Um, it has quite a, a wide range, and we can even find it uh, here in Southern California, which has been pretty incredible. So lately, this sea turtle um, has been recorded at the very uh, end where the San Gabriel River meets the ocean, and there's a mixing of water. And local residents were like, hey, we're seeing a sea turtle here. And that's not too far away from the Aquarium of the Pacific. So we're very, very excited. And so uh, there is a group of citizens who are, are participating in what we call citizen science or community science. And they've signed up with the Aquarium of the Pacific to go out and do surveys. They watch for the sea turtles and they give that information to the scientists at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short. We're actually using a lot of photographs from NOAA. So this organization is a, a government organization and they monitor a lot of our oceans and the animals that live in our oceans. So when you're seeing some of the photos behind me, these are photos that are available um, for us to share uh, through their through education. So we're looking at the green sea turtle. Again, you can see those two front scoots on the top here. Again, if you have questions, don't forget you can text in. You have observations. You're curious about something. All right, so this is the green sea turtle in a tropical area. But again, they can also be found in our colder local waters. But why are they visiting our local waters here? It turns out we have a lot of what they like to eat. So they swim upriver to have snacks. Everyone loves snacks, right? If you find a good place to snack, you're probably going to keep visiting. So it sounds like we have a, a population of green sea turtles that likes to, to come visit us here in Southern California, especially right off of our coast, which is exciting. So again, a bigger species of sea turtle. Uh, but we have also some of the smaller sea turtles. In fact, the sea turtle that we were looking at earlier here at um, in, in our own collection, the olive ridley sea turtle, ta-da! The olive ridley sea turtle and the Kemp's ridley sea turtle are a bit smaller. They're about 80 to 100 pounds. Uh, they're about three feet in length, so a little bit smaller, helps them navigate through their homes a little bit better. You can see even the colors are a bit different. So the, the pattern on their back, those, those scales are going to be a little bit different as well. Um, so we said seven. Let's see. We've done, I think I had, oh yeah. So we have Olive and Kemp's Ridley. Um, there's the Loggerhead Sea Turtle. That one's a little bit bigger. So Loggerheads, here's one that has not only the sea turtle, but there's also some friends growing on this sea turtle. <laughs> These are barnacles. And uh, this is a sea turtle that gets a little bit larger as well. It has a little bit of a different shape to its face. And it can get up to 250 pounds. So just a little bit smaller than the green sea turtles, but a lot bigger than the sea turtle that we have here. There are sometimes um, hitchhikers on the shells of these animals. And these, are, these barnacles are animals themselves. And they drift around in the ocean as babies. And when they find something to cling on to, they do something kind of crazy. They cement their head to a surface. They grow that shell around them. And they feed for the rest of their life, sticking their feet out, grabbing plankton, and then putting it over their mouth. Kind of crazy, kind of awesome. So not only turtles, but also whales um, and a few other animals that have some a little bit of a harder surface can get uh, their own set of barnacles, which is kind of interesting. When we've done some rescues um, here at the aquarium for some green sea turtles, we will sometimes remove barnacles that might be hurting the animals. Sometimes we keep them on, but we might have to remove a few if they are uh, bothering the sea turtle. All right, so we've talked about uh, the loggerhead, the hawksbill sea turtle, it's about three feet in length. Um, again, kind of that medium-sized. 
Then there's an interesting one, um, just to mention, we're not going to talk too much about it, but there's, you know, a lot of the sea turtles here have a big range. They, they swim throughout, a, you know, an entire ocean, either the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific, some of them are found worldwide. But there's one that spends all of its time in Australia, and it's called the flatback sea turtle. And its shell's a little bit different. It has almost a ledge on the side, and it's, um, it can get about just over three feet in length. We talked about the green sea turtles. The last one I wanted to talk about was the leatherback sea turtle. Now we've been talking about sea, whoa! <laughs> Looks like a dinosaur. This is the most ancient of the sea turtles. Crazy! So this animal here can get six feet in length and over 2,000 pounds. It is a, a cool kind of reptilian monster out there, but they're so lovable. And they have a very different kind of shape to them. They don't have a shell like the shells that we've been talking about. Instead of having just one solid shell, they have a really thick, and this is how they get their name, leathery covering over their backs. And they have kind of like shell pieces that are embedded into their, their skin. So it creates this nice armor that can be over an inch and a half thick all along the back of the sea turtle. They also have these ridges. You can kind of see how they come up and they can have seven of these ridges that form the back of the sea turtle and they kind of come to a point and those really help them move through the water. You're looking at the, the sea turtle that migrates the farthest through our oceans. Now, when we talk about a migration, remember migration is when an animal makes a journey. And why they might make that journey can be different depending on the animal, but most of the times it's either to find food or to have their babies. And sometimes where an animal finds its food and where it has its babies can be very different. And that's kind of the story for the leatherback sea turtle. And they're found throughout the world's oceans. There are different populations of them. They say that some of them can travel almost 4,000 miles to get from one place where they find food all the way to where they have their babies. Isn't that incredible? So the leatherback sea turtle is the sea turtle that commutes the farthest. They travel for a big portion of their year. They also have extremely large front flippers to help them as they move through the water. So here's a, a nice picture of, uh, or a video here. It's a little bit dark because, um, believe it or not, this animal has been seen traveling down to 4,000 feet. So this is also the deepest diving of the sea turtles. And they can hold, they've been recorded to hold their breath for 83 minutes. So that's just over, it's like an hour um, and 20 minutes, which is pretty incredible. Who Aiden had that question. Oh, good, I'm glad we're answering some questions here. In fact, uh, Dave has just brought up uh, quite a few. So Brandon asks, how long do they live? Oh, Brandon, that's a great question. You know what? They are still trying to discover how long, especially the leatherback sea turtle lives. They're doing a test right now. They're trying to track a group of sea turtles. I know of one study, and they're trying to figure out how long the leatherbacks live. They believe that it takes them almost 30, 25 to 30 years before they're even ready or old enough to have their babies, which is pretty incredible. So they're thinking they, they live uh, quite a long time, especially the leatherback sea turtle. And the leatherback sea turtle grows pretty fast because it doesn't have to grow, um, compared to other sea turtles, it doesn't have to grow that shell. I thought that was an interesting fact because they, they just have kind of those keratin plates kind of stuck throughout their body or in their, their back instead of having that hard shell, it allows them to grow a little bit faster, which is pretty, pretty cool. So for some, they re some species, they recorded they live anywhere from 20, they think, to 35 years, but they're still researching that. So if you think we've researched everything in the ocean, that's not true. They're still learning all the time. But that's a great question, Brandon. Maybe, um, maybe one day you can help us discover 
uh, how long they live or be part of one of those studies. Alex asked, uh, why do they have a small head? <laughs> you were probably referring to that first picture um, that we were looking at with our, yeah, <laughs> our Hawksville sea turtle here. Uh, you know what? It has a little bit of a, I think it's because it has a longer neck, right? And uh, that might be a little bit of where it's getting its food from. So uh, if you have to maneuver a little bit more to get your food, so the Hawksville sea turtle eats uh, a lot of sea sponges, which I think is kind of interesting. So some sea turtles eat everything. They're just like nom, 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 nom. They love algae, they love sea grasses, like our Kemp's and, and Olive Ridley sea turtles. They will eat things like shrimp uh, off the bottom. Some sea turtles love to eat sponges, so they hunt. And I can show you actually under my document camera, this is a dried sponge, but it's an animal has some hard parts to it. It's gonna look really appetizing. There it is. I mean, in re when they're not preserved like this, they're bright colors. <laughs> Ta-da! Exciting. This is, the, this is a meal for a lot of animals. And what's really interesting is that the sponge has little pieces of what's called silica. Silica is uh, what makes up glass, how we form glass. So these tiny little kind of glass particles that give it shape and that builds up in the sea turtle. And this would make other animals pretty sick, but uh, apparently they're able to munch down on, on this prey and they're, they're quite fine doing it. All right, let's answer some more questions here. So uh, Sadie asks, how come the sharks don't eat sea turtles at the Aquarium of the Pacific? Oh, that's a really good uh, point. Well, maybe we'll go back to that webcam when we get a chance. So, oh, or we can look at this lovely video. I love it. <laughs> this is a green sea turtle taking a nap. So, you know, there are so many different types of sharks out there. And many sharks eat fish. And they have a hard, they would have a hard time taking a bite of the sea turtle because of that shell. Their teeth would probably even break out of their mouth. There are some sharks that specialize in eating things like sea turtle. Uh, for example, tiger sharks have teeth that are a little bit more um, serrated. They have bumps on the side so they can take bites. And sea turtles have to be pretty quick to turn their bodies if they're being attacked by a shark so that their shell helps block that bite from a shark. But m there are a lot of sharks that uh, facing a sea turtle, it would just be a little much for them. So that's a good question. Do sharks eat sea turtles? Yes. Do all sharks eat sea, sea turtles? No. Uh, and the sharks in here definitely don't eat sea turtles. That's why the sea turtle is happy napping in here. <laughs> good question. Uh, Savannah asks, why, it, why are sea turtles' shells so big? Yeah, you know, if you, had, um, if you had to live, you know, your whole life in the ocean, maybe, uh, you know, having something to help protect yourself would be a good plan. And I think we actually have some video, some sh uh, sea turtles swimming around. Maybe we'll put up some sea turtles swimming, kind of show you how they move through the water. There we go. This is a beautiful image. It looks like a slightly younger sea turtle. So you can see that shell is over its body. That if a shark were to come, they would actually turn their body to help defend themselves from a uh, shark attack. So they have that nice thick body. This part down here is actually called a plasteron. So this top part of their shell has a special name called a carapace. And this bottom part is a plasteron. So there's all these, these names to the different parts of the sea turtle. Uh, Daphne asks, will sharks eat turtles? Oh, sounds like we're on the same topic. Thank you for your question, Daphne. How does a, Jaden asks, how does a sea turtle sleep if it breathes air? Good question. So they do have to breathe air, but they have to also be really good at holding their breath. Because sea turtles only really come to land to have their babies, they are spending their whole lives, their whole lives out in the ocean or most of their life. Uh, for some sea turtles, like the leatherback sea turtles, only the females go to shore. 
to have their babies. So the males really don't come onto land after they're hatched. So they have to be good at holding their breath and then resting. Sometimes they float at the surface. Sometimes like our olive ridley sea turtles are good at catching waves. They can kind of rest as the current takes them somewhere. Uh, but they, they typically will take a nap in the coral reef if they're a little closer to shore. We have lots of questions coming in, which is wonderful. Maybe we'll put up some more footage of some of our sea turtles um, cruising around. And then I have one more. Uh, do turtles have different patterns like uh, fingerprints? Yeah, so we were talking about those, um, those facial scales and also the scoots that they have on their body. Lucas wants to know, what kinds of sea turtles can we find in Southern California? You know, again, uh, we have seen those green sea turtles off of our coast. We have also seen, believe it or not, the leatherback sea turtle, although it's pretty rare. Um, they have seen it in, um, more so they see them in like Monterey Bay. We've had people uh, take photographs, but um, that would be pretty incredible. I have yet to see a leatherback sea turtle. I've seen green sea turtles, uh, and I've seen hawksbills and, and some other species, but I think it would be a life experience to be able to see a leatherback sea turtle. So uh, Lucas, maybe if you ever get a chance to go, uh, you can probably see them again by the San Gabriel River. There's um, on the walking path there, uh, I've seen them, so it's pretty cool. Raiden asks, do all sea turtles lay eggs on land and leave babies to defend for themselves? Oh, Raiden, that's a great question. I think we have some footage of some baby sea turtles, which are always fun to look at. Yay! <laughs> you know, a lot of the baby sea turtles, I will admit, look just like this, so I'm not sure what kind of sea turtle baby this is. They just look adorable. Um, but yeah, it is kind of a harsh world out there. I think we also have leatherback. Here we go. You can definitely tell the leatherback sea turtles because they don't have that traditional shell. Oh, look how flappy they look. I love it. Yeah, they just, they're so cute. So yeah, mom turtle digs a, a hole in the sand. A lot of sea turtles will lay over a hundred eggs and then they cover it up. Now, if the temperature of the beach um, and, you know, in some parts, there we go, and some parts of the nest will be over 85 degrees. Um, will, those eggs will turn into females. If it's under 85 degrees, they'll turn into males. It really depends on kind of where, what kind of sea turtle and um, where they're being laid. So some sea turtle eggs are dependent on temperature to see if they turn out boys or girls, which I always think is, is really interesting. But yes, it's harsh out there. They, they have to hatch and then make their way from the, their, where they hatch all the way into the ocean. I think we have another uh, NOAA video that we can show you. Um, the sea turtle hatchlings, or migration, NOAA migration video. So unfortunately, there are a lot of predators out there and you're right to bring that up, Raiden. Uh, so this is a, a video from Noah. It's a little snippet. You can see some of the sea turtles getting ready to lay their eggs. And a lot of them, again, make these long migrations. Here's that hawksbill again. Now, here's Mama. She's about to, to lay her, her eggs. These are the babies. And there are a lot of predators. Luckily, in this video, they don't show that. But here's an example of some of those predators that will uh, definitely snack on those babies. Uh, Carter asked, do sea turtles have eyelids? They do. You can kind of see it right here, which is good. They're able to close. They have this little membrane that closes, but it doesn't close up and down like ours do. They close kind of back and forth, especially good if you're digging. So if you're a mama sea turtle and you come on to, on to land and you're digging, you don't want all of that sand there for you. Francis asks, what do sea turtles eat? Great question. So we said that some sea turtles love to eat sponges. Others love to eat things like crabs off the bottom. Um, green sea turtles, when they're younger, this is a, green, a model. So it's not real, but it's made to look just like a green sea turtle skull. Green sea turtles have a ridge. Remember, they're reptiles. They don't have any teeth. So they have these flat plates that allow them, when they're younger, to eat 
uh, a mix of little invertebrates like crabs and shrimp and then algae and seagrass. And then when they're older, believe it or not, they change their diet and they're just eating uh, things like grasses and algae. So they have a switch from being omnivores, a little bit of veggies, a little bit of meat, to just being herbivores when they're older. And they have these ridges inside their mouth to help them pull up those sea grasses, which can be pretty hardy, which I think are pretty cool. Now, if we were to take a look instead and do a size comparison to the leatherback sea turtle, the leatherback, again, this is another model. I have to use two hands to hold this one. This is how big that leatherback uh, jaw is. Now, we're seeing this without they have, I'll step out of the frame a little bit, in addition to the, the bone that we're seeing, they have keratin that covers over the top. So they have a little bit more that comes out here. Again, keratin is the same stuff that's made out of your fingernails and your hair. It's nice and hardy. And as they're traveling, again, they, they live a lot in the open ocean. They're eating things like jellies. They eat sea jellies or jellyfish. They eat um, things like selps, which are these big, soft-bodied animals, which I think is amazing. You have the largest reptile on the planet, this 2,000-pound animal that eats something that is really soft and squishy and light, so they have to eat quite a bit. Now, to make sure their food goes all the way down, they have something crazy. They have these special projections in their throat that are like these big, sharp fingers that stick out and make sure that their soft animals don't come back out of their throat. Crazy. All right, Charlotte asked, uh, let's see. Why do sea turtles have different shaped flippers? Oh, that is a great question. So we're, we have a picture of the leatherback sea turtle. And we said the leatherback sea turtle does a lot of long distance swimming. It has to have that endurance to keep, so it's like, you know, if you're thinking about the marathon runner, how they move is a little bit different than if you're strolling to, you know, the park. So they, they have ways to make sure they save their energy. Now, if we were to look at any of our other sea turtles, they might have uh, flippers that are designed like the um, green sea turtle for being able to get into some of these tight spaces or let's see, I believe the hawksbill sea turtles um, have even a little, yeah, there's actually a little bit more straight. So it just depends on the type of sea turtle. I know that some of them even have a little nail that sticks out that helps them if they're foraging at the bottom, which I think is kind of cool. And then uh, uh, Helotrope Elementary asks, what is the big biggest and what is the smallest type of sea turtle? Oh, so we were looking at the large leatherback sea turtle, right? So this is the largest at six feet long and 2,000, I think the largest was 2,200 pounds, which is incredible. And then the smallest is what we have here at the aquarium, which is either the olive or the Kemp's Ridley. So we have the olive Ridley sea turtle and the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle are kind of in the same range. Um, they can be anywhere from 80 pounds to 100 pounds, which is so different than the leatherback sea turtle. They live, uh, you know, along the coastline. They're not traveling very far. And you can see that our sea turtle is really happy just tucking itself into the coral reef habitat. Golden Elementary, first graders. Why do sea turtles have scales? Hello, Golden Elementary. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, so scales are a great way to protect yourself. So if you've been learning a little bit about ocean animals, there's many ways that animals defend themselves. Sea turtles are a little bit more, you know, they're a slower swimming animal. They don't move too fast. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. Some of them can, can scooch by pretty quickly, but they want to be able to defend themselves since they're not the fastest. They also don't camouflage as well as maybe an octopus does. So instead, they have really hard bodies. Another benefit of having these scales for protection, if you're a leatherback sea turtle, um, you have a nice, you have these nice scales all over your body to help protect you from the stings of a jelly. 
So if you eat jellies for lunch, you probably want to make sure that you're not being stung. They can also even flip the jelly around <laughs> and eat it backwards so they're not getting so much of the uh, stinging cells from those tentacles. And then Alyssa and Haley ask, what do sea turtles eat for a snack? Ooh. <laughs> so sea turtles can eat algae. Do you see all that green stuff at the bottom? This is probably why this sea turtle loves to hang out here. It actually looks like it's been munched pretty well. So sea turtles can eat things like algae off of the bottom. They will uh, snack sometimes on the little uh, worms and things found in the sand. There we go. It just tried to eat some of the sea lettuce. This is what this stuff is called down here, that algae or sea lettuce. Does it look different than your lettuce that you eat at home? Probably a little bit different. All right, I think I have, um, uh, Laura asked, uh, how do we know leatherbacks are the most ancient? Um, are there fossils? Yes, there are fossils and they are able to, so Laura, that's a great question. The leatherback sea turtle um, has an ancient ancestor uh, maybe you can look up the name for it. I forget it off the top of my head, but it is much bigger than even the one that we're looking at here. So it has a more ancient relative and it is, it was alive during the dinosaurs, so swimming around in the ocean. It was pretty cool. I just remember it being so much bigger than even uh, the leatherback sea turtle, which I think is crazy. That's a great question. It is well over our time. I hope you've had fun. Um, I do want to say that, you know, there are many things that we can do for sea turtles. Sea turtles, especially the leatherback sea turtle who eats things like jellies, um, are often confused and so are some of the other sea turtles out there by the trash that uh, blows or gets its way down our storm drains into the ocean with that jelly food. So a plastic bag drifting around the ocean, um, any type of plastic may be confused by some of their prey. And of course, eating that plastic is not good for them. So anything we can do to reduce our plastic, to use something different besides uh, a plastic bag is helping our, our oceans. There are lots of other ways to, oh, look, here's our sea turtle, yay! To, uh, to be mindful about um, our oceans, making sure our oceans are nice and clean that we're keeping plastic out of our oceans. Those are all really important for um, the health of our sea turtles out there. I hope you've had fun. We only just started talking about sea turtles. There's so much to learn. I hope that has inspired you to continue to learn about sea turtles. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Aquariums Online Academy.